Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. This video will be literally different than any other video on this channel because in this one we'll have a head-to-head -head battle between Blazor and Next.js app router. The reason why I wanted to do this video is because in the recent .NET 8 release Blazor has changed a lot adopting the server-side rendering model. And just a few months back Next.js also released this app router which is also basically a single page application framework that does SSR by default or first. So I've seen on one hand a lot of love for the Next.js framework and then I've seen a lot of hate even in the .NET community regarding the new Blazor SSR. So I wanted to really objectively put them together and compare them over five different rounds in which we will look into some very specific aspect and compare them head to head. So let's start with round one which is layout and the ability to do CSS customizations. This round will start by looking at Next.js first. So here we are in this app root directory and here we see two different files which is this page tsx and this layout tsx. Now to the page tsx and why we need it we will come in a later round but right now let's try to take a look at the layout. So if you can see here the layout of an xjs application is fairly straightforward like here you get the children props and then you just reuse that children props to specific when you return the jsx. In blazor on the other hand we have something very similar here we see that to define a layout you just need to inherit the layout component base and you just need to specify the body where you want your application to be rendered so from this perspective it's really quite the same. However, when it comes to using different layouts in different parts of the application in Next.js, basically we need to specify a layout TSX file in each part of the application where we want to apply a different layout. Here, for instance, if we want a different layout for the dashboard, we have this layout TSX file and here once again we specify the layout. And if I want to have a different layout for customers, then I should come here to the customers and where I have the page TSX, I need to create a new file and to create a new layout for that. In Blazor, on the other hand, if I want to use a custom layout, I can just create a simple component that inherits for, from this layout component base. And then if I want to use it in whatever part of the application, like for instance here, I just need to have a using for it layout and specify the layout that I actually want to use. So it's much easier to actually use this layout because you can easily define for really each page that you have in Blazor what layout you want to use. So in Next.js we need to use a bunch of conventions to be able to have different layouts on different pages but in Blazor you can kind of like do it more granularly by just specifying on each component what layout it should be used. Also in this round let's look a little bit at CSS customization. So here in Next.js we have this global CSS file. However let's look a little bit at, at the scenario where we want to have CSS files that are scoped for instance to just one specific component that we want to style. To achieve this in Next.js we have this concept of CSS modules. And this is a convention that we need to use in Next.js if we want to have this custom styling per component without the possibility to clash with other components. You, name, you have to name your file this.module.css. However, if you want to use this custom CSS, you need to go in each component where you want to use it and simply add this CSS file that you have just created. So you need to import it and then that specific CSS file will be applied. In Blazor, on the other hand, we have what's called file scoped CSS. And we can, for instance, create this counter.razor CSS. So still we need to use the convention here to name this exactly as the component. And then we can specify simply CSS that will apply only to this specific component. And we don't really need to kind of like import it somewhere and make sure that it gets deployed. So it is there by default. Blazor will take care about this. So from my point of view, also working with this custom CSS and try to modularize the CSS also is a little bit more straightforward in Blazor than it is in Next.js where it heavily relies on certain conditions and imports and you might simply just lose track about what CSS you have where. That's why I think that the winner of this round one is obviously Blazor even if not by a big margin but I still overall Blazor offers the better experience when working with layouts and custom layouts on each different component and also with scoped CSS. Now let's go to round number two where we will tackle the concept of routing which is fundamental really for any application framework. Now when it comes to Blazor routing is very simple. You just simply need to have this page and define a route and that's it. Everything else is then handled by the framework. So let's now go over to Next.js where routing is really funny from my point of view. 
So if you want to set up routing in Next.js, no, you don't, you don't just use a directive that you specify, hey, this is my route and just serve this component. No, you need to create your application in a certain folder structure. So you have this app folder and in this app folder, you need to have a page TSX. And this page TSX file will kind of like define that your application or that this file, this component will be served when you go to the root of your application together with the layout. If you want to navigate to your app root directory slash dashboard, well, then you need to set up another folder called the dashboard. And in this folder, you need another page TSX file. And this would be the home page, basically only for your dashboard. If you want to have a URL, something like your app slash dashboard slash invoices, well, you then need to create another in folder called invoices. And in that folder, you need to place another page TSX file that will define or let Next.js know that, hey, this is a route. So routes in Next.js heavily rely on conventions. They are very opinionated and they make you or they oblige you to develop or to structure your application in a certain way. However, if we think that Next.js is basically the evolution of React one way or the other, it's kind of funny because they spent literally almost a decade to convince ourselves, hey, then React is better than anything else because it is not a framework, it's not opinionated, you can just do whatever you want. And then Next.js come out, which everybody says, hey, that's the way that you should do React in an enterprise. And guess what? It's even more opinionated than Angular. It's worse than Angular. I mean, this should even be illegal nowadays in single page application frameworks, no matter if you're doing SSR or not. Bottom line is that in Next.js routing is based only on conventions and simply you need to follow these conventions. Otherwise, your application will not work. So from my point of view, in this round, Next.js should even be disqualified. The fight shouldn't even continue. However, let's still move on to other rounds to see exactly how Next.js and Blazor compare in other areas. And the next one, round three, will focus on this idea of rendering. Rendering is a very important concept when it comes to this SSR part, where you will have your pages basically initially created on the server, but then they are somehow hydrated on the client. And if you need client interactivity, then you obviously need a way to achieve that. Here, for instance, we have this nav links component. And in Next.js, if you simply want to switch to client side interactivity, the only thing that we need to do is basically use this use client. And then this component will have client interactivity. So it's as simple as that. You don't need to do anything else. In Blazor, on the other hand, things are not that straightforward because Blazor obviously uses C Sharp or .NET in general. So on one hand, we need to kind of like everything is rendered on the server when the SSR part comes in. But then if you want to move to the client, then you have to use different technologies. And traditionally in Blazor, we had these two options of having WebAssembly, where you can just run C Sharp code directly in the browser to WebAssembly. Or we had this idea of Blazor server where you could have this interactivity basically through a WebSockets connection where each action that happened in the browser was communicated to the server through a WebSocket. And then the server calculated the HTML div and then returned the corresponding new HTML to the client, which actually rendered it. In, so in this new Blazor web app model where we have SSR by default, when we want to have interactivity, we need to define if we want server interactivity. And for this, we just use this render mode interactive server and that would create a WebSockets connection when you navigate to this component that is actually marked that it should have a render mode of interactive server. However, things can get even more complicated, for instance, when we want to have components that are rendered interactively using WebAssembly. Because for that one, and only for this purpose, we need to create a dedicated Blazor project that would be a WebAssembly host that would be able to kind of like host the components that we want to render interactively via WebAssembly. So the moment that we want to have this type of interactivity in our application, we just need to add another project. We cannot do this without adding it, which is, from my point of view, a little bit cumbersome. But if you go this route and really want to have WebAssembly interactivity, you just need to specify the render mode to be interactive WebAssembly, and then it should simply work. However, things can even get more complicated because in Blazor, we have also the interactive auto mode, which by default renders your component initially on the server through a WebSockets connection until all the WebAssembly stuff is download it to the browser and then switches to WebAssembly interactivity once you have everything in the browser that you need for this type of interactivity. Obviously, this helps 
optimize a lot the way or how fast our components load, but on the other hand, it introduces a lot of complexity. So if you compare this very simple approach to this very complicated approach and complex where it's really hard to choose exactly what you want to do, obviously I think that in this case Next.js definitely has the upper hand and here even Blazor maybe might be disqualified. So let's now move to round four, which is authentication. And here I would like to start from the documentation itself. So this is a documentation for authentication for Next.js applications. And here you can see that you have different examples, what you, what you can do when you bring your own database. You can use either Iron Session or Next Out example. And they say, okay, here is how to configure it. And basically that's it. And then if you want to have other providers, they are mostly based on the Next Out application. However, if you look a little bit at this provider, you see Out0, Clerk, Firebase, Magic, so a lot of stuff that might be shiny. However, if you're developing enterprise applications and you need to rely on more enterprise level authentication solutions, then you are really screwed if you're using Next.js. Obviously, I'm not saying that it's not possible because you can configure and use, for instance, Next out to even log in or authenticate to Azure Active Directory or the new Entra ID, how it is called, or to uh, AWS Cognito, so you can definitely do that. But the documentation is lacky. The library that you use for that is very buggy. It has a lot of experimental features there, and it's overall a nightmare. Blazor, on the other hand, it's just a regular ASP.NET Core application. So when you think about authentication, you can really think about how does authentication work in a regular ASP.NET Core MVC application from six years ago or seven years ago. Because right now, Blazor has the full capabilities that authentication in ASP.NET Core provides. So it's a very mature, very well documented and very well explained aspect that you can easily use. And you can integrate with a lot of different providers, not just Azure Active Directory. You can definitely use AWS Cognito. You can use social logins and everything is much more straightforward. So authentication generally is something that's complicated, so it's not easy. Obviously, there will be hard times. But if you objectively compare the way that authentication works right now in Next.js and the options that you have at your disposal and what you have on Blazor, well, these are kind of like two totally different words. On the one hand, in Next.js, you have something that's really not really tested, that's very hard to get working in an enterprise scenario where actually all the money comes from if you want to do the big money as a software developer. I understand the Next.js is maybe the next shiny thing for all those people that want to think about themselves as, as great SaaS creators and they still wait for their big SaaS launch to replace Facebook or even Twitter or things like that. And they say, hey, I use Superbase, everything's okay. Yeah, it might be okay if you just want to have a regular MVP. But I can assure you that if you work in an enterprise environment where I have worked for more than nine years, then you cannot simply rely on these solutions. You need enterprise grade level ways to do authentication. And that's simply not super base or other type of stuff. Therefore, from my point of view, when it comes to authentication, this round has a clear winner and this is obviously Blazor. Finally, let's move also to round five, which is deployment. And believe me, guys, if you go online and search deploy Next.js application, what you will see is that the moment that you want to deploy a Next.js application outside Vercel or Vercel or however you want to pronounce it, then you are totally screwed. There's literally a ton of frustration out there of people, even experienced developers that really had a lot of problems trying to deploy Next.js applications anywhere else except Vercel. You will find hundreds of reddits, threads on Twitter, people really struggling to deploy even the most simple Next.js application to anything else. And at work, we also worked on a project in September where we used Next.js. And when it came to deploying this Next.js application to an Azure web app, even if we have deployed Node.js applications previously, React applications previously, so we did have the knowledge on how to kind of like deploy JavaScript stuff in Asia. However, it took us, I guess, around two weeks to make it work properly or correctly in Asia. And if you ask me right now, how did we do it? I wouldn't be able to tell you. There's so much trial and error. Nothing is really well documented. Nothing is really well explained. Everything is buggy. So it's really a pain. And while searching for solutions or for 
people that had the same problems. I noticed the exact same frustration, people trying to run Next.js application in AWS or even in Netlify. So wherever you want to deploy a Next.js application besides Vercel, you have a lot of problems and you would wish you have chosen another framework, even Angular. Bottom line is that when it comes to deployment, from my own point of view, there's once again a very clear winner of this round, and this is Blazor. So in total, we had five rounds. We have layout and customization, we had routing, we had rendering, we had authentication, and we had deployment. And based on these rounds, there's only one round regarding rendering that was actually won by Next.js. All other rounds were won by Blazor, and they were won by Blazor by far. So what is your opinion if you compare these two? Which one do you think it's better? If you would have no constraint and knowing all the things that I have presented here, what would you choose if you would like to run an application? Please let me know your answer in the comments. I would be more than grateful to have a discussion on this type of topic. And don't forget, if you have enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you didn't do this already. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.